Hi there, this is Gift Biz Unwrapped, episode 119. Your weakest link to your computer and to getting a virus is yourself. Hi, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to Gift Biz Unwrapped, and now it's time to light it up. Welcome to Gift Biz Unwrapped, your source for industry-specific insights and advice to develop and grow your business. And now, here's your host, Sue Monheit. Hi there, it's Sue, and welcome to the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. Whether you own a brick-and-mortar shop, sell online, or are just getting started, you'll discover new insight to gain traction and to grow your business. And today, I have the pleasure of introducing you to Goran Danov, the founder of Safe Haven IT. Goran has been dealing with computers since he was 16. Back then, he was building his own computers and helping friends fix theirs. He went on to work in corporate IT departments, and he saw that something was really lacking. There was an absence of quality IT providers who truly understood the needs of the small business owner. So he started Safe Haven IT, where today he helps the small business owner with remote management and monitoring, consulting services, and installation. Goran says his goal is to become the trusted advisor to as many small business owners as he possibly can. And boy, do we all need his advice and help. Goran, thank you so much for joining me on the show. It's a pleasure to be here, Sue. Thank you. I like to start off, because we're all creators here, by having you jump into what probably isn't normally (laughs) your area, the whole creative zone. Absolutely. And I'm going to have you describe what your motivational candle would look like. So if there was a color that just resonates with you and a saying or a quote that really describes you or describes how you feel about your approach to business and life, what would your candle color be and what would be your quote? Well, Sue, my candle color would be blue, kind of like the sky and tranquility that I bring to IT. Small business owners panic whenever they see any type of errors or if their computer's not working. And I bring a sense of tranquility when I go in and I'm confident and able to resolve their issue and truly make them feel safe and bring peace to their business and understand that they're panicking. But I come in with kind of like a utopian, like, don't worry, everything will be okay. Okay, and my motivational saying that I've always gone through life is reach for the stars and grab the moon. Reach for as high as you can to achieve the best and uh, most success and reaching for the highest point. You might not achieve the highest, but you will get far in life. Right. You might as well reach as high as you can, because if you go lower, why do that? (laughs) Why would you limit yourself? Exactly. Well, Gift Biz listeners, I have to tell you that Goran is my trusted advisor for computers. And when he just said blue and the tranquility and all of that, he is able to do that. I have called you in times of panic, Goran, and you have been there. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners have experienced the same thing about, oh my gosh, what do I do now? And you totally freak out, right? Exactly. (laughs) Because our dependence on IT now is, you know, everything in our businesses, whether we like it or not, it's the way of the world these days. And if small businesses aren't using IT, their competitors will eat them up because there's other companies that know how to use it. And that's why I come in as a small business trusted advisor and help them grow their business by implementing the right technology. And when I say right, I'm not here to sell you the most expensive technology. I'm here to listen to your needs and to ensure that the technology that I recommend will help your business grow. Got it. The right technology. Perfect. Okay. So Just grounding us a little bit, what got you interested in computers way back when you were 16? Well, I've always been a kid that takes stuff apart. When I was younger, I took uh, apart my Commodore 64. I used to take telephones apart. I was always an electronics geek. At 16, when I got my first computer, I started getting in and doing the whole internet prodigy AOL and just got me more and more interested. And then I started taking computers apart, putting them back together. From there on, I just moved up in rank and started my career. You know, it's so interesting because it continues to reinforce that there are things that we all innately are attracted to, you know, you taking things apart and putting things together. Mm -hmm. It's the same type of thing with the audience. We always talk because people will say, well, you know, I don't know. I'm working a nine to five, but I want to do my own thing. And one of the things we always talk about is like, well, what gave you joy way back when you were younger? So what is that inside you that is a passion? And how can you apply that to your business? And that's what you're doing now with your business. 
Exactly. And, you know, I always enjoyed helping people and being there to calm people down when their computers aren't working. Because when computers aren't working, small business owners and general public, they freak out because the unknown scares people. And when I walk in and I say, don't worry, we'll get it up and running, they kind of get back and start breathing again. You got that right. (laughs) No question about that. All right. Well, we are going to talk about what you do when that happens. But first, let's approach any of our listeners here who are just setting up an office. They're just starting to think about having a business. What equipment do you think, from your professional perspective, should they be looking at to set up a starter office, if you will? A starter office usually involves four to five pieces of equipment. You have your desktop computer, whether it be laptop or desktop. They're generalizing now computers, you know, laptops are no longer considered laptops because some of them are bigger and you can't really put them on your lap anymore. You have a printer and then you have internet connection, whether it's Comcast, whether it's the cable or DSL or any other type of service you need to have that in order to be out on the internet. Once you have that equipment, usually Comcast will provide you a firewall or in a wireless device so this way you can take your laptop and go into another room and surf the internet there. Those are usually the four or five pieces of equipment that you need. You know, the computer, the internet connection, the cable modem and a router, and usually a printer. Okay, so let's go through these a little bit. Obviously, we all understand the use and purpose behind the computer and the printer. And I think we all also understand an internet connection because that's how you are able to connect with the world. Correct. And, you know, if you're just starting out, maybe you don't need the internet connection if you're just doing, you know, you're building your business plan online or something like that. But in terms of being able to communicate with anybody, even email, you obviously need the internet connection. Tell us a little bit more about in really simplistic terms, the firewall. That's something that's online, right? No, that's a physical hardware device. And what that does is protects you from the hackers and people that want to cause trouble. And that doesn't allow people from the outside to connect inside to your computer. It protects you from going out in the world and having people try to hack into your computer. The firewall is basically the defense mechanism that separates you from the bad guys. Okay. And is that part of the modem? Depending upon the service that you have, Comcast does provide you a all-in-one device, which is the modem and a firewall. If you have only a cable modem, you will have to have a firewall. So that all depends upon the service that you get with your internet providers. Smaller businesses would usually use a cable or a DSL system that has all-in-one package. Little bigger businesses might have just a cable modem and use their own router if they're using any type of special features, static IPs, or if they have a computer doing some sort of a hosting to the public. So it all depends upon the services. Okay, so then what is the difference between a modem and a router? A modem basically connects you to the service provider. The router will be able to actually take your computers and network them and have all of them be able to communicate with the outside world. The cable modem is not able to do that. If you have more than one computer, a router is needed. Okay, so if you only have one computer, you don't need a router. Correct. If you have more than one computer, you do need a router. Correct. You do need a modem, which usually whoever your internet provider is would provide that piece of equipment. And the question there will be, is there a firewall on the modem? Correct. That's the usual question that most people come to is like, do I need a firewall? And it all depends upon your service provider. Okay. So at the time that you are establishing service, that question should be asked. Correct. If there is not, then where do you get a firewall? We sell partners with SonicWall and WatchGuard and Cisco. So we're able to provide you the firewall and the right equipment for your business needs. Okay, so we have people listening to this show. Last count was 69 countries. So not everyone here, in fact, the majority of our listeners are not necessarily local. So you would want to find someone, if someone like Gorn even exists in your area, who could help you access that, etc. And Gorn has already talked about certain manufacturers that you could be looking at for a firewall. So what is the specialty that you ask for? Let's say someone is already lost because I certainly would want not want to be setting all this up myself. Right. Who do you go to get help from if you're like, okay, 
I'm not doing this myself. I need some help. Well, the manufacturers are pretty good with their tech support. You know, if you buy yeah, from uh, reputable manufacturers like Cisco or SonicWall or WatchGuard, if you call them, yeah, they're usually pretty good in helping you establish the basis of the uh, get you on the internet and make sure that you're protected. Of course, any special or any type of advanced features, they may charge if it requires special configuration, but basic configuration, all manufacturers will get you online. Okay. Perfect. Or you could ask your kids to help you and pay you pay them a little bit, maybe. <laughs> That's right. Today's uh, children are all born with a tech spoon in their mouth. Exactly. But I think the point is, you know, no need to pull your hair out. There are people that can help you and get you set up properly. Absolutely. You don't have to do it yourself. Correct. Okay. So we're at the point now where we're all set up. Okay. Everything's working, connected to the internet and all of that. We hear all the time in the news now that Gmail gets hacked and banks are getting hacked and records are being exposed to the public, all of that. What types of things can we do to protect ourselves? Okay, well, I'm going to go with the basics for right now and then I'll go more advanced. First and foremost, your weakest link to your computer and to getting a virus is yourself or your employees clicking and not understanding that they read the email and they think, oh, Johnny wants me to share this or Johnny wants me to open it. You need to read the email and ensure that Johnny actually sent that email. It's happened way too many times where I go into a business and say, well, John sent me the email and then John goes, no, it wasn't me. My Gmail was hacked and you just clicked and you got a virus. So that's the most important thing that I teach small business owners with whether one employee or 50 employees is that teach your employees not to be click happy. If they see an email that's atrocious with grammar and they're telling them to click this or they just won $1 million dollars. Have them first read the email and then say, hmm, is John usually send me these type of emails? Well, let me verify with John. It's happened so many times, even to myself, that I get an email from a client when Gmail was hacked with the shared folders. I get an email from a client and I said, this email is not a typical email I get from a client asking to share their folders with me. So I reply back to the client and I say, what is it that you're sharing with me? And he replies back saying, I did not send this. This was sent by you know a hack in my account. So always verify who's sending you the email. That's your first line of defense is you. Now, as far as your computer and hackers, you know, you have your antivirus. There is a bigger necessity of antivirus nowadays than there has been in the past. There's always people trying to sneak an email that you click. And if sometimes if you click on the email, if you don't have an antivirus, it'll let it through. But today's antiviruses are very intelligent that even if by chance you click something that you shouldn't have, the antivirus will trigger and say, no, 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 you can't do this. And so having an antivirus that's up-to-date and current subscription. I've walked into so many different situations where I ask a client, do you have a antivirus installed? They're like, yes. And then I take a look at their software. It hasn't been upgraded since 2014. Antiviruses use subscription models because there's so many new viruses coming out every day and they update their software constantly. Think of it like a database. If you don't have the latest antivirus on your database in loaded into that software, you're only as good as the last time it updated. Perfect information. And I think really, really important because, you know, we look at it just easily with apps on our phone. They're updating those almost every day. And apps aren't anywhere near as important as some of the stuff we have on our full computers. So keeping up to date for sure. Now, I know that there are free antivirus softwares that you can get versus paid ones. Are there certain things we should be looking for in our antivirus? I truly don't believe in the free antiviruses. I go under the notion you get what you pay for. And in today's antiviruses are not that expensive. Number one is Norton. I uh, swear by it. I think it's the best antivirus around. Not to say that there isn't other ones. You have Kaspersky, you have McAfee, you have Panda. There's a whole bunch of other ones. So if you come to me and you say, you know, I hate McAfee, great, we'll go with Symantec. If you've had bad experience, say, I really hate Symantec. I like Kaspersky. That's fine. We'll go with Kaspersky. I'm open to every one of those antiviruses, but having a paid one gives you better peace of mind that you're being updated to the latest and there's a company behind them that's actually doing R&D, looking into new viruses and always making sure that their customers are protected. Perfect. Okay. 
So the two basic steps that you've talked about thus far are one, being really careful about what I'm terming careless clicks, <laughs> right? Correct. And you know that while you were talking, I didn't want to jump in and interrupt you, but you know how you get a lot of companies who will say, we will never email you for your password or login information. You know, like there'll be those little lines in some of their text when you're just getting started. Correct. It's really important. I mean, they're doing that clearly just for this reason, but it's really important to remember that. And also, if anybody is asking you for any of that type of information, I always go back. I don't answer there, but I'll send another email and say, hey, are you guys asking me for this? Sometimes it's like right in front of your face. I get emails from certain banks and I don't even have an account in there. So, I mean, uh, you just have to understand that if it's a legitimate company, no one's going to ask you for credit card information. No one's going to ask you for username and password on an email. So if you ever get anything where someone's asking you for personal information to be emailed, that's the biggest red flag I ever see. Immediately delete it if you want to call the company and say, hey, there's a phishing email I just got. Are you guys aware of that? So this way they can notify their customers right away. Hey, don't click on this. This is not from us. Right. Perfect. Okay. So no careless clicks, everybody. And then make sure you have an antivirus installed and that it's up to date and you regularly update every time that a new version comes out or an enhancement or something like that. Is that all for the basics, Gorn? No, there's one more piece of technology I would implement is the backup. Backup, backup. It's very important to have a backup of your data because, let's face it, in today's technology uh, world, that's the most important thing is QuickBook files or your Word documents or Excel spreadsheets. That's what needs to be protected. If your computer dies tomorrow and you have a proper backup, computers are very affordable nowadays. You can pick up a computer for five to six hundred dollars. That's not the costly part. As a small business, your most valuable asset is the data, your accounts payable, your accounts receivable, knowing who owes you money and who you owe money to. So there's two avenues that there's one called the on-site backup, where you actually have the backup stored at your office for immediate recovery, where, you know, oh, I deleted this file, I'm going to go get it from my uh, USB drive or whatever to be able to get that file. But in today's ransomware-ridden world, on-site backup is just not enough because if you have your on-site backup plugged in when you get hit by a ransomware, that can also be affected. If you have what we call off-site backups, a piece of software that sends your data to a secure data location and servers and all that where it's not physically located in your office, you have a better chance if you get hit with ransomware or a virus that you can recover quicker by getting the uh, off-site data back onto your computer and having all your data recovered within maybe a day instead of losing it. Absolutely. Now, I use Carbonite, and you and I have talked, and you have given me the check mark that that's an okay one to use, right? Correct. I've had such peace of mind knowing that I have Carbonite, and I'm just going to make a comment just for everybody right here, because right on your computer, you can see that it's continually backing up the files. You can also go and access those files. Let's say you don't have Dropboxes or something where you have access to your information everywhere. A service like Carbonite, you can go in and just grab random files. But it's also good, Gorn, when you're switching out and upgrading a system or your computer crashes because Carbonite saved everything and you can just reset everything. I know I'm making it way easier than it is, but you can reset everything. You haven't lost any of your information if your computer totally fails. Correct. And that's the whole thing of having an off-site backup where if something catastrophic, your office burns down and now you have no access to anything or God forbid your office gets broken into and now your computers are stolen and you have no data, well, you need to make sure that you have the resources to get that data because, you know, let's face it, today's world, those are real possibilities. And boy, does it put you back in your business if you're going to have to spend time figuring all of that out. Versus being able to get back up and running. Correct. Because that's the name of the game is, you know, how quickly can you get back in business? And my feel is not a question of if you're going to get hacked or if you're going to get a virus. It's a matter of when. And being protected against those bad guys and viruses and all that is using the proper defense mechanisms. Okay. So, Gift Biz listeners, be careful of careless clicks. Make sure you have an antivirus and then also some system to back up. 
And so now I have no idea what you're going to say, Gorn. So I don't know if I'm covered here or not. But what would you say in the more advanced arena? You were saying that in terms of keeping safe, you're going to do the basics and then there was a higher level. Well, I mean, having a system that's on site and having a multiple layers of that not only having one on-site hard drive, but having a couple that you switch around. So this way you make sure that your data is always readily available. I can't stress that enough of how many times I've run into business and their hard drive fails, their computer fails, and it's all of a sudden they're panicking because they have no backups. And that's why my remote management and monitoring service, we put business owners at ease because we're able to monitor and get all the logs and all the errors that we see and better assist the business owner say, hey, your computer is about to fail. I think it's time for us to replace the computer instead of, you know, you'll never hear a computer go, hey, Sue, I'm ready to fail. Are you ready for me to fail? Because I think, you know, that big project you're working on, yeah, I'm not going to give you access to that project. But don't worry, my hard drive is going to go too. (laughs) Are you going to have the right backup? That's the main thing is most small business owners, well, I don't need to go. Peter's $400. Yes, but your data is the most valuable asset. And if you can't get to that data or if your employee is sitting there for two days until you get a new computer and trying to recover the data, what's your ROI for that employee not being productive for those two days? Absolutely. I agree with you. So a remote service who is retaining the backup and then also has kind of an advanced radar out of what's going on with your systems. Correct. Okay. How do you feel about the iCloud services for things like your accounting program and all of that? Do you think they're safe versus storing them locally? I am a big fan of Microsoft's OneDrive. Not to say that Apple's OneCloud isn't secure versus another. I use Apple's iCloud for my iPhone and all my pictures. God bless it. If I ever lost all the pictures, I would be totally out of luck. In yesteryears, we used to print all the pictures. Now, I barely have any pictures of my youngest child. They're all on our iPhones or on our iDevices. And so, yes, having a cloud service is definitely the way to go. Whether you go with Dropbox, whether you go with Microsoft's OneDrive, whether you go with iCloud, Definitely having that constitutes offsite backup because we all can put our phones, plug it into our system and do a backup of all our pictures and all that stuff. But in today's busy world, how many of us have the time to sit every week and say, hey, let me plug my phone in and download all the pictures? Most of us, we really need the pictures on our phone because there are business owners that take pictures of certain things that need to be able to get it at their fingertips, whether real estate, whether chefs or cupcake makers, they want to post the latest creation over to Instagram and they need the pictures to be on their phones. So how safe is it? Like I use QuickBooks and I'm doing my accounting in the cloud. Is all of that safe and hack resistant or whatever? It's resistant as the company that provides the services. Big companies invest millions of dollars in their IT infrastructure and in their security. So, of course, they're going to have the best security available. Now, is that necessarily going to stop all the hackers all the time? No. You know, just how Gmail gets hacked and companies, big retail stores get hacked, it's going to happen. And the best thing to do is to make sure that you have backups on your computers and on the iCloud and have multiple sources for those pictures, not only depend on one. It's always about segmenting. You know, it's the old saying of don't put all your eggs in one basket. Same thing here. All right. Now let's get into the really scary part that you were referencing earlier in terms of, you know, we walk in for our day, we're ready to get going. We turn on the computer and OMG, something's wrong. What do you do in those panic situations? What would you advise for us? First of all, you don't panic. When you panic, you try to make rash decisions. And the point of it is if something does appear on your computer and you're not aware of it, first thing to do is shut down the computer. You don't want anything else infected or want to make sure that it doesn't spread. So that would be the first thing. Then the second thing is contact your local IT professional, whether it be Safe Haven IT or another company that provides the same type of services and let them know, hey, I saw this error message and this has happened. Okay. And they would come on site or you can take your computer to them and they would turn on the computer and figure out what this is and clean out the virus or any type of ransomware that you may be hit with and either recover your data or wipe your computer and start all over. 
I know that there have been times that I've experienced with you, Gorn, where it's not working and you say, well, shut down and try starting up again. Would you suggest that first before you just shut down and take it somewhere? It would depend upon what your IT professional will tell you. That's why the first thing to do is contact one of them and see, hey, I'm getting this message. What should I do? An IT professional would be able to tell you, this is just a Windows error and go ahead and shut down and restart. If it's something where you get hit with the virus and all that and shutting down and having to come on site and then they would be able to turn on the computer and get you off the internet and your network so no other computers can get infected, they would be able to give you a better understanding of what just happened. Okay. And this actually did happen to me just last week. So how apropos. (laughs) Right. And one of the things that I did that I thought was really helpful is instead of having to remember what that message is, just grab your phone and take a picture really quick of the screen before you shut down. Because then you've got everything. You can send it over to an IT person, whatever needs to happen. Correct. Okay, so I guess in terms of being careful when things go wrong is first, I'm going to go back to those careless clicks, you know, just be really smart on how you move around the computer. The other thing that I found a lot of our customers over in my other business, the ribbon print company, will go over to sites where you can download free fonts. And any sites, that's an example, but there's other sites like that where you're trying to capture things. And especially if they're free, they have all these links and all these clicks on the pages because they're trying to get you to install the Bing toolbar or go under a new search engine or like all these different crazy things. So even in those situations, you have to be super careful that you are clicking and downloading what you think you're clicking and downloading. Right. I'm not saying not do it, but just... Just be super careful and triple check before you click. Usually in that aspect, if you're looking for certain fonts or certain programs, make sure that you contact other people in your industry and say, hey, what is a good website that I can go get this font? Once you get the proper site, you can go ahead and bookmark it and know that that site is not going to get you any viruses or any type of malware. Now, what I've seen in today's world is that a lot of things have changed and now software has become a subscription model and installing or purchasing Adobe Photoshop used to cost eight, nine hundred dollars. Now you can get for twenty dollars. You can get things more affordably if you need a font and you can buy a program that installs 5,000 fonts for $50. I usually like to pay for those kind of stuff because even myself, I don't want to go through and say, oh, this site's bad or I got to click through here because it wastes your time. If you know how much does your time worth if you have to spend an hour looking for a free font and when you can buy a complete package from a reputable website for 50 bucks for 500 or whatever fonts, to me, it's a little bit more applicable than sitting there for an hour trying to find one free font. Perfect. That's a good idea. All right. And I think in terms of finding someone locally, you know, you're really saying two things. Don't panic. Shut down. Make sure you've captured what the error is so that you can explain it. But then right away, contact someone locally for help. Where can people find those local people? Most of your big retail stores, Best Buy, all them, they have uh, their services like Geek Squad uh, contacting them and saying, hey, I've gotten this error. What do you think? And they would be able to tell you. If you want a consultant that would work with your business, just doing a local search on IT consultants in your area, you might get a, you know, call them up and ask them, get all their information as to their charges and how long they've been in business and be able to make a decision on who you want to be your trusted advisor. Perfect. Okay. And I would go one step further even than that, Gorn, and that is you and I met through the chamber. Correct. So I think developing a relationship with someone who is in this field, even if you don't need them right now, but next time you're at a networking meeting with the chamber or any other groups that you're in, if there is someone with this skill, it's worth making sure you have their card at the very least and then developing a relationship if you can so that then, I mean, I know, Goran, well, you go out of your way for everybody. I know that. But I will just say right here, one Sunday morning, you jumped in your car and came over here because you knew you had a packed week and I was in trouble. I don't know that a lot of people will go to that extent, but I also trust anything you say because I know you now. You know, we've had this relationship. I'm not calling you just out of random act because I was desperate. It's really good to get these types of relationships established before you're in trouble. 
Well, it's like those saying, if you know, like, and trust them, you will buy from them. And same thing with the IT. If you know, like, and trust your local IT guy, you're more able to be at peace. Say, oh, okay, I got this message. I'll call Johnny from the chamber. I know, like, and trust them. Absolutely. Totally agree with you. One more thing to round out all of this IT information, and that is, how long do you feel a computer's lifespan is? In a typical corporate world or small business world, I would say between four to five years. If you push your computer more than five years, you're on what I call borrowed time, meaning the computer can at any point decide to die because, you know, the equipment, your hard drive is a mechanical. Having SSD drives does extend that life a little bit, but anything over five years, your software is going to start to get long in the tooth, as they call it, where you're going to start slowing down. You're not going to be able to run the optimal speed because your computer is five generations old. And so then what is the safest way to get rid of that computer to protect yourself? Well, the computer itself is not, you know, you can always get rid of it. But the biggest thing is the hard drive that's in that computer. That's your garage. That's where you store all your files and all your data. And most people think, oh, if I do a format or if I trust recycling company to do a format, they're going to do it. The thing is, a simple format is not going to erase your data. And there's many articles on the internet and there's a great posting that I have on our Facebook page that shows that people have gone in and purchased these recycled hard drives that people claim they have wiped. And through a simple $50 program that you can find on the internet, I can go in and recover all deleted data files. There are ways to do a proper format. It's called the DOD Department of Defense format where it goes through seven times and it wipes out the data. But most people don't take that effort. The easiest way that I've found is to take out the hard drive and physically destroy it. Take a hammer to it. Take a large magnet, a very powerful magnet, and degauss it and be able to get all that data completely off. You don't want to have the uh, peace of mind saying, oh, I'm going to just take it. They'll take care of it. Yes, they might do the simple format, but that's not enough. If you find a recycling plant that says we will physically destroy the hard drive and they give you a certificate that has been done, at that point, maybe that's a little better than just having a recycling company wipe the drive. But again, I'm chicken, so I always like to take my hard drives and get take a hammer to them and physically destroy them and be able to know that the data there is not recoverable. And so then that destroyed hard drive, I believe you told me, can just go in the trash. Into recycling. Into recycling. Okay. And then the computer now is still good. It just doesn't have a hard drive, right? Correct. And you could donate that to charity. You don't have to throw the computer away. Correct. You know, there's a lot of people who still might want, even though it's older, that they could still get use out of a computer. Oh, absolutely. Just regular grammar school kids that are typing their homework on it, that computer will be more than enough power and resources. Giving to the less fortunate is a way that I like to give back. So if I have computers and I do recycling for clients too, I donate to church organizations, Red Cross, all these places that take computers and recycle them into the community so the less fortunate are able to get a computer. You have given us such great information today. You know, I wanted to keep this conversation going because all of these points are so important. And at this point, Goran, I want to invite you to Dare to Dream. I'd like to present you with a virtual gift. It's a magical box containing unlimited possibilities for your future. So this is your dream or your goal of almost unreachable heights that you would wish to obtain. Please accept this gift and open it in our presence. What is inside your virtual box? My virtual box has peace and tranquility for the small business owner and making sure that the small business owner can continue to grow and to be understood and their technology to work for them, to be protected against all the bad things that the world holds for the small business owner as far as technology and being able to be a true trusted advisor for small business owners to understand that technology people are here to help you and understand that we are here to make sure your technology grows and your business grows. So my virtual box is a sea of tranquility where I know that all my customers are protected and have peace of mind that if something bad does happen, they're covered or they're able to recover quicker. As you were saying that, 
and I'm not going to ask you to do this, Gorn, because I don't even want to know, but you know so much and you know all the dangers that are out there because you see things. Right. It's a a lot of times better that we just don't know that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So inside your box is like, you know all that stuff and we'll just stay peaceful because you know how to fix it and we don't need to know what the trouble is. We just need to follow your advice. Well, not everybody can be a tech person. Not everybody can be an accountant. The same thing. That's why IT people are here. That's why everybody depends on us to keep the economy growing. But because the small business is the economy, the majority of the businesses that make up our new economy are the small business owners that need these type of services. And that's where I come in and others that that are like me that want to protect the small business owner. So if any of our listeners are looking at getting in touch with you or learning more about information that you provide, where should they go? They can go to our website, www.safehavenit.com, or they can go on our Facebook page as well, Safe Haven IT, and we post regularly about any type of malware or information. On our website, we have a information request thing where if you need more information, fill out the form and we will give you a call. Or if you want, contact us via our phone, 847-594-3209. We'll be more than happy to answer questions, come on site and give you guys the ability to really feel at peace. Perfect. And if you're calling from Italy, you'll have to provide a plane ticket for going. <laughs> Actually, two, because I want to come too. <laughs> exactly. All right. And Gift Biz listeners, you know that there'll be a show notes page that has all the information as well. So if you're not anywhere where you could capture all of that information, you can just access the show notes page. All right, Goran, fabulous information, really, really important information. So I thank you so much. You've put this down for us in a very, very logical way in terms of what we need to make sure that we protect ourselves. I so appreciate your expertise and sharing that with us today. And may your candle always burn bright. Thank you, Sue. It's a pleasure being on. Where are you in your business building journey? Whether you're just starting out or already running a business and you wanna know your setup for success, find out by taking the Gift Biz Quiz. Access the quiz from your computer at bit.ly slash giftbizquiz or from your phone by texting Gift Biz Quiz to 44222. Thanks for listening and be sure to join us for the next episode. Today's show is sponsored by The Ribbon Print Company. Looking for a new income source for your gift business? Customization is more popular now than ever. Brand your products with your logo or print a happy birthday Jessica ribbon to add to a gift right at checkout. It's all done right in your shop or craft studio in seconds. Check out the ribbonprintcompany.com for more information. After you listen to the show, if you like what you're hearing, make sure to jump over and subscribe to the show on iTunes. That way you'll automatically get the newest episodes when they go live. And thank you to those who have already left a rating and review. By subscribing, rating, and reviewing, you help to increase the visibility of Gift Biz Unwrapped. It's a great way to pay it forward to help others with their entrepreneurial journey as well.